All right, where are we? Capital C, the second resurrection. I gave you this in the past. You should have it. That's the first resurrection. Don't look at it. The first resurrection is for believers only. Come with me in Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. Come with me in Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. That's all I want. Now you know, it was written here. Sheol cannot remain there because now this earth will dissolve completely, not only the surface of it. So death, Hades, gave up the dead. The sea gave up the dead because the sea will be done away with. As much as you can love it, the sea will disappear. So the second resurrection, make a note, is for unbelievers only. The second resurrection is for unbelievers only. Can you tell me the difference in the amount of years between the first resurrection and the second resurrection? A thousand years, correct. The first resurrection was Yeshua the first, church saints, two witnesses, Old Testament saints, tribulational saints. There was an order. Same with the second resurrection. But what happened to Calvary? What do you mean by Calvary? Well, graves were opened. They're oh, the, these were Old Testament saints destined to die again, like Lazarus. Isn't that part of the first resurrection? Correct. Okay. No. No. This is all. Yes, in a sense, because the Old Testament saints are resurrected there. They have their part. They, they died again, like Lazarus. Lazarus come forth. He was not resurrected to glorified body. And those who resurrected from the grave there when Christ died here, they were not resurrected to glorified body. Otherwise, Christ would not be the first fruits of the resurrection. They were resurrected to die again, either as a church saint or as an Old Testament saint, since we don't know when they die. Yeah, the grave was open. No, no, they, 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 were, they were resurrected when he died. Right. When he died, not when he was resurrected. So they was resurrected before his resurrection. If they are unto glorified body, he's no longer the first. Okay. Revelation, we, we've looked at it. Okay, same. First, the Antichrist. And secondly, the second order, all unbelievers right here. The Antichrist was already in the lake of fire, is already in the lake of fire, so he is the first fruit of the second resurrection. It's kind of a, not jokingly, I'll use a, uh, not sarcastic, but there is another word for this. Uh, uh, the irony, that's it. Because the Antichrist being the Antichrist is, is the first fruit of the second resurrection also unto eternal damnation. So the body and soul now are resurrected from hell reunited at the great white throne judgment for the unbelievers here. Come with me in Revelation chapter 20, 14, and 15. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay? The second Resurrection is for unbelievers only. And keep in mind, we'll, we, if we do the life of the Messiah, we'll explain the death of these guys at the, at, the, uh, at the death when they got resurrected. Nobody was resurrected into glorified body because fir the first fruit has to have preeminence and pro prominence also. It's the same with the, those who touched the bone of Elijah. In 2 Kings, they, they threw a man into the tomb of Elijah. When he touched the bone, he lived again, destined to die again. Same thing. Revelation chapter 20, so be careful with evangelistic preaching. You want to note what I'm going to be saying, what I will say right now. With 
what, with what the evangelicals say about the preaching here. Are we still on C? Or yes, on C? still on C. No, we haven't touched that. Uh, no, we are on D right now. We are? We are on D. I never said it. Okay, so what do we put in our notes for D? Uh, just what I just read right now, uh, because I actually, we just started D right now. The only thing I did with this, beloved, it's read verses 14 to 15. Evangelistic preaching says this. Believers believe in Christ because you want to spend eternity in heaven. Because if you die as an unbeliever, you will spend eternity in hell. Neither point is biblical. Not both of the statement that I said right now are biblical. It's not proper. Believers are not destined to spend the eternity in heaven. And unbelievers will not be spending the eternity in hell either. Come with me in Luke 16, 19. Luke 16, 19 to 31. That's the famous story of this. If you want this, that would help you quite a bit, uh, Les. Transfer that to Les in the back. Give it to Germain and then to Les, because all of you have this. All of you have this. 19 to 31, that's the story of the two compartments. Okay, these two compartments. Don't... You know it. You have it and you master this. When Christ died, he descended into the righteous part of Sheol. Where the rich man was not. Lazarus was there. Mary, Joseph, Zechariah, Adam and Eve were there. That place. The righteous part of Sheol. Because nobody could enter heaven prior to the death of Christ. When he died, his body was in the tomb right here wrapped up. But in his immaterial part, he went down to the righteous part of hell. He was seen by those in hell proper. And he took all these spirits and he took them to heaven with him. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. That's what we call the descent of the Messiah. So while his body was in the tomb, he went into only the righteous part of hell, but he was seen in hell proper. And that place was called here, Luke 23, verse 43, Abraham's bosom. That's located right here. So he went to Abraham's bosom and he released the captive, not the body. Only the soul went with Christ here. Okay. Today, as we speak right now, the unbelievers, the body is somewhere in the ground. And their soul are right here. So the first box here is obsolete now. It's empty. This still there, people. The spirit of those who went down to hell proper. This has a number of fallen angels. And the fallen angels here are those who entered married with the, the race. But it's not what we want. We only the human place here. So that's what existent here. At the judgment seat of at the great white throne judgment, all these guys, there is no place found for them because that's in the center of the earth, so that doesn't count anymore. They are judged and all of them thrown into the lake of fire. For the believers today, today, their bodies still on the ground, but their immaterial part, soul, mind, and spirit are in the presence of God. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body. To be absent from the body, it's the immaterial part. Because if you kill me right now, the body goes on the surface here with a nap of blood. So my immaterial part, Paul says, I prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. That's in the heavenlies right now. 
Philippians 1.23. Philippians chapter 1, verse 23. But I am hard pressed from both directions, Paul says, having the desire to depart to be with Christ, for that is very much better. So if you depart tonight, you are with Christ. Remember, the destiny of all unbelievers is not hell, is the lake. So when you evangelize, accept Christ. I don't want you to abide in the lake of fire for eternity. That's the proper language to use. And accept Christ so that you may be spending your eternity, not necessarily in heaven, in the new Jerusalem on the new earth. And the eternal destiny of unbelievers is not hell but the lake. So to finish my statement about the evangelistic statement, on the other hand, heaven will not be the eternal abode of believers to be seen in the last two chapters. You're not spending eternity in heaven. There is a new planet, a new earth coming from which will descend the eternal Jerusalem on it. That's where you will be spending eternity. Heaven and earth will be one, but it's not, you don't spend eternity playing violins on a cloud. This is what I mean. There will be a city, the eternal Jerusalem, which is already existent in heaven. Come down on the planet to be coming after the demolishing of this one. Next week will be that teaching. So that's why you need, because I'm finishing right near eternal order. That's what I want to finish right now. I'm, I'm exhausted today. That's what I want to finish. The eternal order is the creation of the eternal order. We have time just to read the text. Come with me because you were signing at me. Come with me. Revelation 21. It's only the reading of the text. 1 to 8. Then I saw a new heaven. Don't stop there. With the book of heaven that you're lending me. It's okay. Didn't read it yet. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Ay, ay, ay. From the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there is no longer any sea. So don't bother about a waterfront property here. It's waterfront, this is water, water crap, it doesn't, move, it doesn't work. And I saw the holy city. Oh, a city? Yes, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. Then at that place he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. Forget about the age of 100 there. It's in the messianic kingdom. There will be no longer any death. There will no longer mourning, crying, pain. The first things have passed away. And if we sit on the throne, behold, I am making all things new. And he said, right, because these words are finished the sentence. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega and so on. Where does it say? Go to verse 22. Who is there? Read it out loud for me. Verse 22 of chapter 21. Beloved. No, I did not see a temple in the city. <laughs> Stop. Bible history. Solomonic temple. Zerubbabel temple. Temple of the Antichrist. Temple of the thousand year. How about a temple on the new earth in the new heaven? No. Because you will be residing with the triune God. Don't need a temple. Don't need a temple. No moon. I saw no temple. Verse 23. Karen, I pick on you. 23. The city does not need the sun 
it's up. Where is it? Where did it go? You need quite a few dump trucks to get rid of this. Karen. Or the moon. It, the moon is on the other side. Will there be sun in the messianic kingdom? In the messianic kingdom, will there be sun? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Because those who don't celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle will not receive their... Uh, finally. You don't send your delegation for a thousand year rain. So to need rain, you need the sun. It creates a kind of a scientist called it kind of condensation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. like it was in the garden. That's it, sort of. But yeah, I like it. Yeah. But there is something that you have not noticed right now, and I finish with this. Finish with this. Uh, let's read a passage that will create goosebumps. Come with me. I'm jumping the gun, but it doesn't matter. 18, 21, 18. Come. I'm jokingly. I'm, I'm relaxed right now since I'm done. <laughs> the material of the world was jasper. Gold, like clear glass. Jasper, verse 19. Sapphire. Chalcedony. Emerald. Sardonyx. Sardius. Chrysolite. Beryl. Topaz. Chrysoprase. Don't know what it is. Jacinth. Amethyst. The gold, the road will be paved of gold like this. I agree with you, like it was in the garden, but there is something better than this. Come with me in Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Come with me in Ezekiel chapter 28 for a moment. No. Am I in Ezekiel? No, I mean, uh, come with me, Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay? I will give you the verse in a moment. I have something to say. Uh, you are in Ezekiel 28? Uh, stay there. I'm in the book called Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There is a dot there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void. Question for you. Is God creating things uh, void and formless? No. Saying, what have I done there? Okay, let's start again. It's void and formless. It became void and formless, covered with water, with the fall of Adam. Satan. Oh, Satan. Okay. Yeah. And in Ezekiel chapter 28 is a place where it describes the fall of Satan. And it's a place where the earth was looking like before he fell. If we have a description, not in the book of any kind of book, not condemned, but in a Roman, in a novel. The, the Ezekiel 28, it, it's about the fall of Satan from verse 10. And it described the earth even prior to the coming of Garden of Eden. And it says here, you were full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. Talk to Satan. You were in Eden, the garden of God. But it's not the men, that vegetable garden that he's speaking about right now at all. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, Satan. The ruby, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, emerald, the gold. The workmanship of your setting and sockets was in you, Satan. What was the earth prior to the fall of Satan? Way Many years before the fall of man. It was the mineral garden of Eden. Not the veggie garden, but the mineral garden. And he will bring us back 
where we should be prior to the fall of Satan and prior to the fall of man. I did not smoke anything. <laughs> Three comparison. Ezekiel 28, Revelation chapter 21, and the, the stone that was on the breastplate of the priest when he was representing the rose of stone. Lots of similarities. You have studies to do for the whole summer with this. Have fun. Compare those. Make, make a pen. Take all the passage. Write them down and make comparison. And you will see, wow, that's the fall of Satan here. And it became flooded with water. And it was full of water. So that's why in Genesis he needed to separate the water from above and the water from below and shape a piece of earth, dry ground, because you don't like to be wet. So for you to come in and the earth remain watered and so on. It was flooded never to be destroyed again. What water? Next destruction will be by fire. So Satan fell. It became void and it need to be reshaped. So the fall of Satan appeared, uh, occurred between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Yes. Created. Okay? Reshaped, reformed there to make an habitat suitable for man. And in the course of time here, we have thorns and thistles and try to have a good glass of salt water. It's not fun. And we carry on. And in the thousand year kingdom, this, you will fish on the Dead Sea. There will still be the Mediterranean Sea, which will probably be still salty. But when the new earth will come down on the new, from the new heaven on this earth, no more Adamic curse, no more salt water. Which came as a result of the fall of Satan. No memory anymore of all these things. And you have been inscribed in the book of life, and you will live all this. But if the earth was without form and void, and John says that all things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, then who made it? Him. World, okay, so God. God made him. He was there without form and void. And so not initially. Not initially. No, we can hold the difference. Not initial. It doesn't. It became like this. Yeah, but he still made it. Of course, of course, it's part of the plan, brother. Yeah, but earlier you were saying that if something was without form and void, could God have made it? Well, yeah, he did. He did not make it void. He allowed it to become that way. It doesn't say that. Read the construction in Hebrew in the book of Genesis. Mm. The Vav construction became yeah. void. The famous became void. So what's the reason why it became void? There's controversy over that. I know. Uh, uh, there is no controversy in the scriptures. Mm. Yeah. There is in our minds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, God does not create anything void. It became that way and it's part of his plan. It's because somebody disobeyed. Somebody's trying to deter the plan of God, which is perfect, which is Satan. That's why we, you have been closed for two years in May. But we still, ugh, come on, beloved, please. There is no controversy in the text. God is perfect in his beauty and in his creation. Don't be like Ecclesiastes, an old king that no longer is how to receive instruction anymore. If there is controversies in the Bible, it's because mankind made it. We don't serve a God of controversy here. Science is anything but controversy. We have as many denominations now among the church as we have the, the names of vaccines. That's what I call controversy. Unreliable sources. How many Christians, Christa, still believe that the, local, the flood was local? Junk. 
It's saying to God, can I help you? <laughs> and it doesn't come from the mouth of unbelieving people. So then sin came in with Satan. Yeah. Satan is the first sinner, yes. So then it can't go out when Jesus died on the cross as the second Adam. He took everything on him. Sin it came in with Adam and went out with Jesus. So Satan was the first sinner. But I'm Among the angelic realm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. keep the two distinct. Among the angelic realm. That's why there is no redemption for Satan. He cannot repent. Who, le who led mankind astray in the Garden of Eden? And it's kind of funny because you like that saying, oh, Satan is old and he was created and he has seen mankind going for a long time. Everybody says it. Oh, he's old. He knows exactly what he's doing because he has a lot of experience. It's perfect. His wisdom is corrupted, though. Ezekiel 28, it says this. That's why he still tried to destroy the Jews. But he has been the will going. He wanted everything. He had access to the throne of God and he said, I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 11. I want that glory. He was not happy to reflect the stones. He wanted everything. And everything that he touched when he fell became defiled. He said, come on, beloved. I leave you with this. Uh, he resurrected. Mary, Mary was Rabboni. Don't touch me yet. I have not ascended to the Father yet. Why? He needed to go up with his blood to cleanse the heavenly sanctuary, which was defiled by who? Ah, uh, you nailed it. Yeah. Lee. When did God create the heaven and the earth? Uh,
something to. That's. <laughs> Allow me. Let's keep loving one another. It's very important for me. Good. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Not many people do. My wife is like this. A lot.